Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to talk about discrete inputs for a PLC. Discrete inputs are those devices like push buttons, quarter turn switches, as well as all kinds of sensors that are capable of providing information, discrete meaning only on and off information. Now, one thing we want to get clear at the beginning of discrete information is that it does not necessarily mean DC. A lot of people kind of connect those two words, discrete and digital together, and in their mind that means DC. Most of the time that is true, but there are a lot of AC input devices out there. Push buttons and switches, think of the light switches in your house, they're completely capable of carrying AC voltage. There's a lot of AC powered sensors and switches out there. So when we say discrete, all that means is that it can only be on or off. They can be input devices like these button switches and sensors, or they can be outputs. DC and AC are appropriate, but we'll be showing some wiring tips for all kinds of different devices. And it doesn't matter whether they're AC or DC, the basic principle of current flow and therefore the thought process of how to wire these PLCs is going to be the same for every PLC and for most discrete sensor situations. I will put a disclaimer in here and say that not every device is the same. So you might come across some that are a little bit of an oddball situation. What we can do is show you most of the situations, but you always have to think critically about what sort of wiring you're using, who's wiring color standards, and don't just assume that because we're showing it one way means that all PLCs are wired the same, but it's a good bet that most of them are. So let's take a look first at the push buttons and switches with each one of the PLCs and then we'll take a look at sensors, three wire sensors which are a very common scheme and see how we can connect those to a PLC. The first PLC on our list today is going to be the Automation Direct Productivity 1000. The I.O. module that we've got is a 16 CDR. What that means is that it has 16 terminals. The first eight of them are discrete inputs. These are actually DC powered inputs, so we will be limited to a 24 volt power supply. The outputs are relay outputs. Relays are pretty universal in the sense that they can carry AC and DC voltages, and they can carry different voltages if given enough of the common terminals. But we'll talk about outputs a little bit later. First, we want to focus on inputs. And because of the simplicity of this module, we have a set of screw terminals, and I see at the top that one is labeled as C1, and then following all the rest of them down from there, it goes one through eight. The C1, or common in a PLC, means a return path usually going back to ground that allows us to complete the circuit. Now ground being the negative of the power supply in this case, so perhaps more appropriately the negative voltage of the DC power supply. That's where we're going to have to make a connection from C1 back to the negative of a power supply. Now what this makes it is a syncing module. There's actually a different variation called a sourcing module, which inputs, sourcing inputs are a little less common, but that would mean that our common goes to power instead of going to the ground or the negative. For more information about the whole sourcing and syncing ability, we've released an ebook that tells a lot about that difference between sourcing syncing and also shows some of the troubleshooting steps and the appropriate sensors that you can connect to it along with wiring and troubleshooting. So be sure to check out that ebook if you want more details. So let's take a look at a push button and a sensor connected to the Productivity 1000 PLC. To connect a push button to this P116 CDR, which is a discrete input module, we have to connect a common terminal, which if we recall, that's the last terminal, the one at the top, the C1 terminal. We want to connect that to the negative of the power supply, which is a distribution block here. Then we'll need to supply power, or 24 volts, to the terminal, and we'll just use the first terminal, or terminal 1, as an example in each of these. Now sometimes the first terminal PLC is labeled terminal zero, so that's something that you want to get a handle on first before taking a look at the programming of the PLC. In Automation Direct, they start their numbering at one. In most of the others, they start their numbering at zero. So it's just something to keep in mind depending on the system that you're dealing with. So the first thing that we're going to do is connect our common terminal using a ground wire. Now these wires are going to be a bit long, but that's all right. I just want to show you the general idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm going to make a connection from common to the C1 of the PLC. First thing I'm gonna do is turn my power supply off. Now often we can make connections for DC 24 volts with power applied, but we probably wanna stay on the safe side and make all of our connections while it's turned off. So we're going to connect the first wire 
a negative wire from the negative distribution block to the first terminal of our PLC. That again being the common terminal and every PLC is going to have a common connection somewhere. If you don't make that common connection, then a circuit can't be completed. So we can try to supply the 24 volts at any one of the terminals, but unless we've provided that return path back to the power supply, we shouldn't expect to see it respond when we press the button. Now we need to make two positive connections. First, we need to supply the positive voltage to the push button in the first place. So I'm going to use a positive wire to connect to the push button, and I will use a normally open contact. And then I'm going to use a second wire that indicates a positive voltage coming out of that normally open contact block, and it will be going into the PLC's first terminal. So if I think about the continuity of a circuit, I have supplied positive voltage. That positive voltage goes through a control device, a normally open contact block of a push button. And by the way, the color of the push button, the type of push button, we could use a green one, we could use a quarter turn switch, none of these matter. The flow of electricity is the important thing. It's going to continue out of the push button and go through the PLC from its common terminal back to ground. If that circuit is completed, then when I power this on, I should be able to press the button and see an indication of voltage. And as you can see, there's a small LED on the side that turns it on. I have a program in here that's already turning on an output, which we'll use later, but all we're concerned with is this input and verifying that it works properly, which it does. Now, if this was a normally closed push button, we would expect that when I push the button, the light turns off not turning on. This indicates a normally open push button. Cool thing is for testing input devices and circuits, I don't have to have the computer connected because as long as I can push the button and see the input, I know that it's responding. So we don't have to have the computer or logic software connected to it like we will when we get to outputs. So this is example is our Allen Bradley PLC, our compact logics with embedded IO. The only real difference about this one is that the common terminal, that C1, is already connected inside to our FP or field power connector. That's real handy because it means we won't have to run that extra one. They also did something kind of cool on this PLC in that they provided voltage for push buttons. Now that's not quite as easy with three wire devices because we need both power and ground. But if we are just connecting a push button, we can very easily and quickly connect a push button to one side to voltage, the other side to the input terminal, and the circuit is already completed inside. So let's real quickly connect all of those showing the push button and this three wire sensor, and let's see how easy they made it for this model. So if we remember, for push buttons, we have to supply the voltage to one side of the push button, and we have to give that voltage a place to go off to the PLC. So let's see how easy this is to connect here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make this connection with power applied just so they can take a second to, to warm up here while we're making the connection. But I take my two wires and I see that there's a voltage terminals here at the bottom of the PLC and there's zero through 15, which is 16 input terminals. So take a look at this. All I have to do is supply voltage, which is one of these lower four on this side, plug it in. These push to connect terminals, all you have to do is plug them in and the crimping around the ferrules keeps it connected. And then to the other side, I plug it into the first terminal. Done. So now that the lights have turned green, I can see from the LED up here at the top, that works. That's really cool. For our last example, we've got the Siemens S7-1200 PLC. So it's hard to see in the video, but right here is a small built-in power supply. I've got a 24 volt source and a common. So with my push button, that's exactly what I need to supply is the 24 volts. The other terminal is the input terminal, which receives that voltage. So I'm going to connect a terminal to zero, the first terminal in the block on the input set. And to the other terminal that's supplying power to the push button, I'm going to supply that from the power supply terminal. Now we don't always use the built-in power supply. It's not very beefy, but sometimes we'll use an external power supply and this will run off to that power supply and we'll be able to run a lot more devices. But if we just got a couple of them in a pinch, this works great. So you can see from the indicator light that this turns on and off exactly as it should. 
Now for the push button, that was pretty easy because we had open terminals, one on each side, and it was easy to supply the power right off to the PLC. But when it comes to three wire sensors, those ones are transistor based devices and they're a little bit trickier, but let me tell you the way that I normally see this done. If we look at the back of a sensor, they'll usually have a socket or what they call a pigtail connector with a set of wires. Now it gets the name three wire connector because we have to supply power and ground, the positive and negative DC voltage, but then a third wire acts as the signal output. They're really efficient devices. Since they're transistor based, they'll only supply a little bit of electricity in one direction uh, which is great for PLCs, but the problem is, see that all three of these wires, well, four in this case, but one of them isn't used, they're all right next to each other. What that means is, if I need to supply positive and negative voltage and the signal, you notice the PLC terminals aren't all that close together. When we were looking at that setup of wiring, the positive and negative are in a terminal strip way over on one side, and the PLC is a few inches at least away in the other direction. So I can't directly connect all of these wires, one to the PLC and two of them off in another direction. So here's the way this is usually done, and this is how we're gonna do it too. I've taken one of these sensors, but then I've connected it to a small terminal strip. Very often inside of a control cabinet, when you open the doors, you'll see these long sets of terminal strips and there'll be a space where there's three of them in each place. So three, 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 and they're all serving a similar purpose in that each one has a set of wires for positive and the negative and the signal wire. Positive and negative will be supplied to the first two terminals and then the final wire, the signal wire, will go off to the appropriate PLC or I.O. module. So it's a great way to distribute our voltage, which is why often they call them distribution blocks, but it's how we're going to be able to choose where to supply the power, the plus and the minus and the signal off to the PLC. So let's see where these three connections are going to be and then as we put our hand in front of the sensor, we'll see if we can get that PLC to activate. So let's check that out. So if you were asked how many wires we're going to need to connect this three wire sensor, if you answered three, you're correct. We're going to need two signal carrying wires and one negative wire, or more appropriately, one power to supply 24, one wire to supply zero, and then one wire to supply a signal. So that gives us all three of these wires. The blue wires are anywhere where we could see 24 volts. White blue wires are restricted to anywhere where it's only zero volts. Now in most wiring connectors using this quick disconnect wiring style color, brown is most often our positive color, blue is the negative color, and black is the signal carrying wire. So if I start with the power wire, and again you can see my power supply is disconnected, I'm going to supply power to the brown wire, power to the brown wire, and I'm going to supply negative to the blue wire, that's the next in line. Always consult wiring diagrams first. We sometimes can get into a habit of if something looks the way we've always seen, we just assume that it's always going to be that way, but that's not always true. We wanna be careful before we just start going sticking live voltages to sensors. At best they won't work, at worst we can damage them and hurt ourselves and others around us. Now this final wire is the black wire, the signal carrying wire. That's the one that's actually going to supply the 24 volts off to the PLC. So I'll connect this in exactly the same place that I had the push button before. Because if you think about it, if we're just trying to supply a voltage signal, it doesn't matter whether it's coming from a sensor or for a, from a push button. So now I'm going to supply power, and then I'm gonna take a look at the sensor and immediately I don't really see anything unusual on the back of the sensor. Uh, oh, there we go, there's a light. That light, we can see every time I shine it at something, I could put my hand in front of it as an obstacle as well, I see the signal being energized on the PLC. And you can hear the click of the relay as well. So this is an example of a three wire sensor. And ultrasonic, photo optic, reflective, it doesn't matter at that point. As long as it's a 24 volt sensor, it's gonna make the connection to the PLC. So what's important is we have to supply power and ground, the plus and the minus of the DC voltage, and we have to supply the signal going off to the PLC. We left that common wire, the C1, connected. That's really critical. Uh, and then once we've done that, any push button, switch, sensor should be easily able to be connected to the PLC. So now that we've spent a long time on this one, let's briefly look at the others to see how they compare. So here's the three wires for my three wire sensor again. I don't recommend making connections when everything is active. 
but I'm gonna be very careful here so that I know to get everything in the right place. These three wires I have positive because that's the brown wire, negative for the blue wire, and black for the signal wire. So I'm gonna connect my common first. These lower four terminals on this side are for common. And then I'm gonna go ahead and connect my signal. So the last thing I make is a voltage connection. That way I don't have active 24 volt wires hanging out. But this is my signal wire. So going into terminal one. And last, I'm going to connect the positive voltage wire. Now, if I put my hand in front of the sensor, there's terminal one lighting up just like it should. That's easy, isn't it? Now this three wire sensor so far has been pretty easy, but if you're a step ahead, you might've already noticed a little bit of a problem. And that is if there is only one common terminal, we have to supply a common back to the power supply and we have to supply a negative off to our three wire sensor. But I only had one open screw terminal and I can't just stick two ferrules down inside of that one screw terminal. Trust me, I've tried it, it doesn't work. So in this example, I'm gonna play a little bit of a trick up here. What I did was put an extra terminal block right next to the negative supply for the sensor. And then I stuck a jumper next to it. And what that's going to allow me to do is first connect my negative supply to the PLC's built-in power supply negative. And then since I have a spare negative connector next to it that has now been connected to negative because of the jumper, I can connect that to the common terminal of the PLC. That's how these terminal blocks with jumpers allow us to distribute what was just one terminal and get it to go to a whole bunch of different locations. That's called power distribution. Now I need to supply power to the sensor. Well, that's pretty easy because I have the power supply connector here and I need to get the other wire off to the input terminal of the PLC. So let's do that. And then we'll turn it on to make sure that it works. And here we can see that as I run my hand in front of the sensor, the input terminal turns on and off just like it should. And so that's the scoop on discrete inputs for PLCs. I realized that was a bit a long content to talk about, uh, but it covered a lot of the topics and PLCs that we're not gonna have to talk about again when we go to discrete outputs. So you're able to bear through that one, and now we can get onto the outputs as well as talking about some of the ladder logic, which is the programmable part of these PLCs, and we'll start learning how to use all of these push buttons and sensors and devices to be able to interface with the world around us. So stay tuned and check out more. Yeah.